Death in Castlevania takes you back to the last door you passed through without your whip upgrades, subweapon, or subweapon upgrades. So if you're going to die, doing it here where there's a ton of candles to power up your whip and holy water is probably the best plan. The start of stage 3 is also the introduction to flea men, which are an extremely obnoxious series staple. They're uh, very good at jumping straight at you and over you and just dodging your attacks if you're not careful and your timing is off. They also don't appear anywhere else in the level, so I don't see uh, why the level designers felt the need to introduce them here. We'll be seeing a lot of them in the last three stages of the game. Now, for a challenge that's introduced non-lethally and appears repeatedly throughout the level, how about some uh, crows? Crows both chase you and dodge your attacks pretty well. I'm not sure how it decides which one to do, but they can be a real pain in the ass, especially when they come in multiples. Now, I happen to know the way that those two will move from having played this game repeatedly, but if it's your first time through, one or both of those crows is likely to get you and knock you backwards into a pit. Or if you're lucky, onto the back platform. Now, if I pick up the holy water, it would be an easy feat to take out this skeleton and probably get some bonus points for hitting his bones on the way down. As it stands, I should have dealt with the obstacle by retreating to the platform that I had knelt on previously and throwing a boomerang, but I didn't. I don't really get what the designers were going for in this particular room, because it's entirely non-threatening. The Medusa heads are back, but there's actually no threat whatsoever from them. Except right here at the end, where uh, they start coming from both directions, because you are in both of their spawn zones at once. Other than that, no challenge whatsoever, so I don't see the point in bringing them back. You might have also noticed that I took three bars of health per hit instead of two. As you progress through the game, the amount of damage you take per hit increases. Instead of being dependent on what enemy hits you, in Castlevania, the damage you take is dependent on what stage you're in. In stages 1 and 2, you take 2 bars, 3 and 4, you take 3, and in 5 and 6, you take 4 bars of damage per hit. While it's still in mind, I'd like to point out that I really like that last crow. The way that it dodges completely over your attack range, without breaking the rules of uh, crows established by their previous appearances in the stage, is actually really neat. Now, this stage is... you might have noticed there haven't been any health pickups, and that's because the challenge from this stage comes from it being a gauntlet of enemies and pits. And nothing makes that more apparent than this last stretch, filled with crows, bone towers, skeletons, medusa heads, everything you've seen so far except flea men, all thrown together. Right here is a particularly interesting challenge. If you try to go too far, and not deal with the crow ahead of time, you'll get hit by the skeleton. And if you try to go further than that without dealing with the crow, you're going to run into another skeleton and be caught in a bit of a pincer attack. And uh, that's going to do it for the stage proper. The only thing left to do is take on the boss. You begin surrounded by these two mummies, but with a health pickup. The mummies will attack you from both ends, both by walking into you and firing... Uh, their bandages that move kind of like Medusa heads, but with varying height. The best strategy for them is to take a hit from the left one while you're facing right, so that you will bounce through it and be able to take on both mummies at once. Doing so and having a cross makes things way easier than they have any right to be, but if you had died anywhere else in the level and were stuck with the knife given to you before the boss, you could have been in real trouble. All things considered, though, Stage 3, along with Stage 1 and 2, is actually fairly easy. The difficulty doesn't really start ramping up until Stage 4, which we'll be taking on next time.